everyone. I'm Bethany Lozada. Thank you so much for joining me today in my podcast, Overcomers, where we talk about how to overcome life's difficulties with a friend, faith, and a cup of tea. Today, I'm drinking English breakfast tea, which is a great alternative to Earl Grey if you still need that punch of caffeine in the morning to get you started. We're in a series right now called Overcome by Anxiety to Overcomer, a mother and daughter's faith journey prevailing through anxiety. We've talked about how we have anti-anxiety muscles we can strengthen to battle against anxiety, and today we're going to talk about the anti-anxiety muscle of processing. We'll discuss how parenting in and of itself is a process, and how we can teach our children to process what they see, hear, and experience in the world around them. In order to do anything well, it takes time, commitment, effort, perseverance, And parenting is no exception to that. Oftentimes we wish we could just skip the process and go straight to the product. But that's just not how the world works. We don't go from one day being a couch potato to the next day running a marathon. Almost a year ago, I went on a trip with my husband to Norway. And I wanted to do some backpacking and hiking in the beautiful fjords. I knew that in order to make it to the top of those fjords, I needed to do some training. So six months before we left, I started doing some hiking, running, and then walking with a backpack with some weight on it. I knew that I needed to strengthen my muscles and build some endurance in order to make it to the top with my heavy backpack. I am so glad I spent that process of training before we left because I was able to make those hikes and enjoy the beautiful views from the top of the fjords. If I hadn't, I would have been pitching my tent at the base camp and I would have been so disappointed. Parenting is so much like that. It's this process, this training ground where we're learning, stretching, growing, making mistakes, and learning from them. But through this process, we're moving from contemplating to practicing to progressing, and we're getting better and more refined in our parenting. We are consistently putting little coins into our kids' piggy banks of Intentional conversations, coaching, teaching, showing love towards them, spending time with them. And someday when that piggy bank is full and our kids are going out into the world independently by themselves and they're faced with a difficult situation where they don't know what to do, they can pull back from those coins you've been depositing in their life to gain wisdom and shed a light to have discernment and finding truth when making decisions. All of our children are going to learn a filter with which they're going to process what they experience, see, and feel in the world around them. It can be influenced by social media, by friends, by TV, by school, or anything in the world around them. We want to make sure that we're the main influencer in their lives and God's word that we're teaching them so that they have a filter to process the world that's full of truth and godly insight. There's a few ways that you can teach your kids how to process what they're seeing and hearing and experiencing in the world around you. The first thing I would encourage is finding a time where you can actively work on processing with them. For us, it's on our car rides home from school every day. We have about 20 minutes where it's just me and the kids in the car and there's no looking at cell phones or any other distractions, just time to talk. I like to ask them open-ended questions. That means there's no short yes, no answers. They have to give me more explanation and more story. Some of my favorite things to ask them to get them starting to talk are... Tell me something interesting that happened today or tell me something funny from school. Or there's the more basic ones of tell me about something you learned. Who did you eat lunch with today? How are your friends doing? Any of these questions that are bound to get them telling you stories or about their day and their experiences. It's important to find those times when your children are willing to share and talk. For me and my kids, it's on our car rides home from school or at bedtime when it's quiet and it's just the two of us in their room, they oftentimes open up to talk. 
When we spend time with our kids and are available, they're going to feel more comfortable and more engaged to open up. If you can't find a time that you guys are connecting, I encourage you to look at activities your children like and try to plan some to do together. Maybe your daughter likes painting nails or going shopping or your son, maybe he likes building Legos or playing catch outside. Start investing, spending some time with them, making yourself available so that they can come to you and talk about their concerns. Then when your kids do come to you and tell you about something they're maybe confused about or they had hurt feelings and are upset, then enters another opportunity for you to help them process. Helping your child process a situation will require asking questions to help them think and come up with their own ideas as to the meaning, possible reasons, and their interpretation of a situation. Once they've shared with you something that's troubling them, you can start asking some probing questions. You can ask questions to help give you some more clarity. Maybe you need more details of the situation or to understand it more fully. You can also ask some questions to guide them in thinking a certain way. Maybe they're, you think they're a little off the mark and what their interpretation is. Instead of just flat out telling them what you think, you can ask them some good questions to help them start thinking on their own of other possibilities. You can also help encourage them to think from somebody else's perspective or point of view if they had a disagreement with somebody, a teacher or a friend. You could help them think through what that person might have been feeling or thinking or experiencing. Then you can let them know some of your own thoughts and ideas and always point them back to God's truth in order to guide them in their decisions and how they view things. Let's look at the example if you have an adolescent daughter. Adolescent girls have a lot of opportunities for processing because there are so many emotions and feelings that are going on. It's also a time where peer relationships can have a little bit of friction and hurt feelings. Let's say your daughter comes home one day and says that one of her friends hurt her feelings because she was unkind and really snappy with her. Well, first you can listen to what she says, empathize with her, ask some questions for clarification to understand as much of the situation as you can. Then you could encourage her to think about her friend, maybe what would cause her to respond like that. Maybe something else happened to her that day. Maybe she got a bad grade on a test, she didn't get enough sleep the night before, or somebody else was rude to her and it was bothering her. You can encourage your daughter to either just show some grace and let it go or have a conversation with her friend and ask the friend if they're doing okay or if there's something bothering them. This gives them the opportunity and some good communication skills to talk about feelings in a healthy way and to get to the bottom of things and instead of letting it snowball. When you have children with anxiety, you have so many opportunities for processing as well. I know with my daughter, when I see her feeling anxious and the anxiety flaring, we start doing a lot of processing to make sure we're looking at anxiety with the lens of truth and putting it in its rightful place and not letting it blow up and take over their thoughts and mind. Just over a year ago, we went on a family trip and we ended up flying through Vienna, which is where my daughter had her first anxiety crisis. And then we ended up staying in Prague. For her, I... For, in my opinion, I thought this was going to be great. She's going to be able to conquer her fears and know she doesn't have to be anxious about anything anymore. But for her, it was a lot of triggers and reminding her of her anxiety and making it worse. So one morning I saw her struggling. She looked anxious. So I asked her some probing questions and how she was feeling that I was noticing she was a little withdrawn. And she started sharing that Being there was causing lots of memories to come back of when she had her anxiety crisis and it was coming out of her mind and she's remembering more things and the anxiety was just snowballing and getting worse. So we decided to talk about it and I asked her, what are you most afraid of? She said, throwing up in front of people. I said, okay, worst case scenario, you throw up in front of everybody now. What's going to happen afterwards? Well, people might look at you disgusted or it's going to feel really gross. But then what will happen afterwards? She'll be fine and we'll keep going on our trip and having fun and doing what we wanted to do there. 
When she was able to look at it and process it that way, she realized this was not a life or death situation. She would not die from throwing up. She could keep going on and enjoy her trip. She needed to look at her anxiety with the lens of truth, process it in a good way, recognize it was there, implement some coping strategies, and she knew that she was able to cope and manage her anxiety and be able to enjoy the rest of her trip, that it didn't need to overwhelm and overcome her. One other example I'll give is when when we did some processing with our children was several years ago, uh, we had a man collapse in front of our home. A neighbor came up to the door saying somebody was collapsed to come out and help. My husband being a doctor started doing CPR. And the only thing I could think to do and be helpful was just start praying over him. My daughter came to the door. She noticed something was wrong and we told her to stay inside that somebody was sick and that we would talk about it later. Well, the man ended up passing away and after the ambulance took him away and everything settled down, we went back in to talk with the children. They knew something was wrong and we had to process with them and talk about what had happened. What we The lesson we wanted them to learn from this was to help other people and be compassionate. When people are in need and are presented in front of you or literally at your front door, you need to respond the way Jesus would by showing love, kindness, and help. After we talked about that, the other lesson we wanted them to take from this was they don't need to fear death. Knowing that somebody just passed away can cause a lot of fear and anxiety. We wanted them to know when you have Jesus in your heart, you don't have to fear death because you someday will go to heaven with Jesus and he has already conquered death. It really helped a few days later when we went to go see his widow and bring some food over there and just um, give her a hug and talk to her a little bit. The kids could see how in this Sad situation, God was still able to use our family to give help, show compassion, and walk alongside of them in a very difficult time. So in the end, although it was a sad, mournful situation, the kids were able to glean from it some wisdom, some deeper understanding, and process it in a way uh, that Jesus would want them to understand the situation. Processing helps you draw connection with your children, gives you more opportunity for communication and understanding, and it helps shed truth and light into their lives that they can use later on. Not just with anxiety, but any obstacle or struggle they're going to face in their lives. Today, I'm going to close this with a scripture from Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 through 10, and then pray for us. And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best. Dear Father, thank you for giving us the ability to have insight from your Holy Spirit and truth from your word. Thank you for the the patience you have with us as we're in the process of learning how to parent the children you have blessed us with. Let us persevere and not become discouraged by all the obstacles we're facing. Let us stand firm and take heart. I pray that our children will learn to see the world through your eyes and process their experiences through your truth. Bless them with understanding and acceptance of the journey they're on. Strengthen their ability to process and a heart open to our guidance. I pray you would bless my friend today in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today in my podcast, Overcomers, and I can't wait to see you the next time.